I turn that on. The interesting thing about growing up in Indiana is that uh, I thought Indiana was the only place in the world. The whole world revolved around Indiana, obviously, because... <laughs> is there anything more important than basketball? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought the world revolved around... Oops, you don't want to see my email from Steve Davis. It's Facebook. It wasn't Facebook. It was, it was an email. <laughs> <laughs> okay, physiological side. But, but that's what I thought, because I'd never been anyplace else. We had visited other places, but they were pretty, everybody's pretty much like Hoosiers, aren't they? Aren't they? Hoosiers? People from Indiana? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And the answer is not just no, but hell no. My goodness, of course not. Wait a minute, this thing's not coming on. Oh, here we go. Okay. Wrong one. Right? Did you go to the eclipse, um, the teachings? No. No, I didn't. <clears throat> yeah, I got my own ideas about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was afraid I was encroaching on your culture, on this culture. And I, and I have that feeling. It would be like me going to church, because I'm not... Christian. So if I went to a church, wouldn't I be encroaching? If I went to a mosque, wouldn't I be encroaching on their religion? Because I don't, I'm not a believer, right? Okay, so that's what I was afraid I was going to do yesterday. That's why I didn't go. Now I was invited, of course. Oh, this isn't going to work, is it? Okay. All right, all right, all right, whatever. Why isn't this working? What have I done? I guess this is close enough. Okay, we'll, we'll start this in a second. Um, but, okay, so how do we pass this class? What are, we, what are we doing in this class? What are we doing in this class? Let me get a copy of this. How do we pass the class? Uh, okay, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10.30 to 11.50. Uh, uh, there's three tests, okay? One after the fifth chapter, one through five, then six through ten, and then uh, eleven through fifteen. Or eleven through fourteen, I guess there's only fourteen chapters. Uh, there's a five-page paper, and the paper will be about comparing this culture, the, the Diné culture, to another culture. And those of you who are understand another culture, like the Blackfeet, or the Yorlan, and the Cinnaboyne, or the Pima, you guys have a, a a step, you're a step up from everybody else because they're going to have to read something about another culture. And it doesn't really matter what culture that is. It can be another native culture. Uh, I have a book about uh, basketball. If you like basketball, I've got two books about basketball. One of them is about the uh, Pine Ridge Reservation and the other one's about the Crow Reservation. Now if I say Crow, that means something to her. Actually, I have a Crow. This is, this is your dad's soul. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is really kind of interesting. This, uh, my, uh, my bolo tie. Uh, this is a crow design. It's a it, crow collars. They're pink and I don't know. We, we, we don't want to talk about crow. But uh, <laughs> so, so, so your dad had this thing and he was trying to sell it. He couldn't sell it to anybody. And of course, he goes up. They to, don't like, well, they don't get along with crows there. Yeah, no, they don't. Yeah. yeah, you guys, nobody gets along with the crows, but the crows are there. Anyway. It's not their fault. <laughs> but, but as far as people in the Southwest are concerned, <coughs> you, what, what difference does it make if they're crows? <coughs> so okay. You know, you, you don't know anything about the crows, right? I think my pick on him now that I know that. <laughs> she always says, don't you ever go with a crow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you marry a crow and I'll kill you. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, people from the south. You have no idea what the crows, the crows are. And this is a, this is a. And I wore this specifically because it was crow. And I knew you guys would be in the, in the classroom, so. <laughs> and your dad sold it to me. This is a funny thing. He couldn't find anybody on Fort Belknap that would buy it because, well, it's crow, and nobody on Fort Belknap wants it. Anything that's crow, even though there are a lot of, a number of 
of crows that live there. But uh, yeah, I was the only one who would buy it, and he sold it to me cheap. He gave me a family ring, so whatever that is. He probably gave me double the price or something. I don't know. Oops. Can I turn the lights down? Okay. All right. Okay, so anyway, so we need to compare the cultures, uh, two different cultures. Uh, each chapter has a theme. Each student will write a posting related to the impression of the Diné culture and the theme of the, of the chapter. You all have uh, uh, have interacted to, with, uh, with the Diné culture to some extent, to a major extent for some of you. That's the only culture that you know. Uh, so that's it. That's it. So there's a, a, a discussion. There's a, uh, a paper that you'll have to write. And there are three tests. And that's it. Okay. We're going to talk about a lot of controversial things. When you talk about cultures, uh, a lot of times you get into to something very uh, controversial. And mainly that's because your culture tells you that things should be one way, and another culture may do it completely different. A good example is uh, uh, sexuality. Sexuality is different uh, in, in a lot of different cultures. They do things differently. They have sex in a different manner. Uh, sexual romance uh, in some cultures doesn't exist. Um, men and women live apart, and they just get together to uh, uh, to reproduce. In some cultures, in some cultures, and this just happened. What was it? In some cultures, when a woman is uh, on her period, uh, she has to leave the house, or she'll contaminate the house. Did you know that? The Jewish culture, if a woman is in her period, uh, her husband can't have uh, uh, intercourse with her. Not only until she's no longer uh, on her period, but she has to also go to the church and be cleansed after her period. Isn't that interesting? We don't even, this culture doesn't even talk about periods, right? I think they have, when you get your first menstrual, you're having a thing. Right, that's the time. But that's really the last time that anybody will ever talk about it, period. However, in the Jewish culture, in, in the more traditional Jewish culture, they know exactly when their periods are. And everybody knows exactly when their periods are. There are some cultures where the woman has, has to extricate herself from the house. Not in the Jewish culture. She can still cook, but there are certain things she can't touch. Or she'll contaminate them, theoretically. But there are some cultures where she has to leave the area. There's a, a, uh, there's a, a different uh, building that she has to live in. And uh, somebody has just died. It was really kind of odd. Somebody died in that building and nobody knew about it because she was there all by herself. And she died and there was a huge controversy. It, it happened over the summer. And I can't remember where it was. I apologize. I should have it was. Okay. <laughs> so all of this, cultures are, are really kind of con uh, uh, confusing. If you think about it, uh, when Westerners first came over here, like four or five hundred years ago, um, one of the problems that they had with the, with the indigenous people was that the cultures were different. So what did they do? Well, they tried to Christianize everybody. Of course, they tried to convert everybody to their own religion, right? And they didn't stop. This just, this just stopped like 50 years ago. So for the first 400, 500 years that, uh, that uh, Westerners were on the, uh, in the Americas, they tried to convert everybody to their own religion. They tried to change your culture. They had boarding schools. And in the boarding schools, what did they do? Cut your hair, wouldn't let you speak your own language, changed your clothes, and tried to Christianize you. Killed you, sexually abused you. Right. And all those things took place. Uh, and if you look at what was not only what was going on here in the United States, but if you go up to Canada, it was as bad or worse. So the Canadians were doing the same thing as the Americans were doing. Trying to convert you. One of the stories uh, coming out of uh, Montana, <clears throat> the Real uh, um, uh, Uprising, 
in uh, Saskatchewan, Alberta, where uh, that group of Canadians, uh, the Mati, and uh, their their native allies, the Nakoda, the Cree. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the Chippewa Cree are they're Canadian tribe. They're not Amer an American tribe. Why are they at Rocky Boy? What in the world's going on? Why are they at Rocky Boy? Well, they had they left Canada because the Canadians drove them out. And there's this whole mass of people coming into the United States. But where did they put them? They put them on the uh, at Fort Assiniboine. Is that going on right now? No. Because oh. no. I read something that said um, anybody who wants to be part of the Rocky Boy tribe to get a hold of the Rocky Boy, um, their tribal office, and they're in the room, people are like crazy over there. It's pretty. Did they change their percentage? I think so, but the You don't even have to prove that you're Chippewa Cree? Cree or Chippewa? Um, well, you know... It was in a glacier, Great Falls Tribune. Huh. I don't know what they're talking about. Anybody can join the tribe, huh? <laughs> little Shell. The Little Shell are the landless tribe up in Montana. A lot of them are on Fort Bell now. There's a lot of a, a Little Shell there. Um, they were with the uh, with Rocky Boy or Stone Child. Can't remember which one is the correct name. Rocky Boy. It, that was the name of the chief that uh, that made the treaty in 1917. But the Little Shell was with they. Their band was with uh, Stone Child or Rocky Boy, and uh, of course they he uh, wrote them out. The Stone Child wrote them out of the treaty. So that they didn't have any land. Uh, what uh, what where Rocky Boy is? Part of it is Fort Belknap Reservation, and part of it is Fort Assiniboine. It was it used to be a military reservation. Yeah, Assiniboine came from Canada. And the Assiniboines came from Canada. But that was that was my other story about uh, about uh, Real. <clears throat> so one of the things that the Canadians did, they tried to they tried to drive as many Indians across the border as they possibly could, and especially after the Real uprising. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's why there are so many Assiniboines in, in the United States and hardly any up in Canada. They don't even call them Assiniboine up there. They call them Carry the Cat, I think. I think they, they call them Carry the Cat. It's the same tribe that, you know, that's up there in the First Nation. Anyway, yeah, that's one of the reasons. And they killed as many as they possibly could. We're all Canadian now with police. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about two different cultures. One is the English culture up in Canada. We're, we're talking about the American culture, which is a, is a bastardized culture of German and English and just about anything that you can mix together. Uh, that's the American culture. And that, that uh, is, is our definition of, of Western culture, if you think about it. Okay. Really? Uh, so does everybody understand the syllabus? Three things that you need to do. Answer the discussion questions, the test, and the paper. Okay? That's it. Uh, I have a lot of fun with this class. Uh, culture is one, of my, is, is one of my favorite things. Talking about culture is one of my favorite things. I need to... Should I be in the camera or not? <laughs> Don't you think um, the United States would be more of a, like, like a... We would be considered the immigration culture? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're mixtures of everything. Yeah. Uh, we almost didn't become dominant English. We almost became dominant German. We actually there are actually more people that are related to Germanic tribes than there are to the English. To the English. I know. You know one of the crazy things about uh, all that immigration that was taking place. Let me get out of the light. One of the crazy things about uh, all that immigration that was taking place. Uh, Germany was not a country at the time. It was just an. Uh, it was just a group of people that spoke the same language. Uh, there were like a hundred different tiny little structures that made up Germany. Mo primarily, it was Prussia, uh, but the rest of Germany, the, the Rhineland Falls and whatnot. If you look at at Germany, it's this huge country. Uh, but at that time, it wasn't. It wasn't a country at all. There, were, there, were, there. It was no Germany until 1870, and then Germany became a country. Okay, uh, so what are we talking about when we're talking about culture? Uh, pe people with different cultures uh, live their lives differently. They speak different languages. And, of course, there is a Blackfeet language. There's, uh, 
Assiniboine uh, uh, and Aani culture. One of the interesting things that happened uh, when the United States started creating reservations, one of the interesting things that happened was that uh, the Blackfeet were able to get their own reservation, mainly because they were scared of you guys. They were really scared of you guys. <laughs> and this started way back with Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark were warned about the Blackfeet. That's one of the reasons why they tried not to make any contact with the Blackfeet, because they were afraid you guys were so aggressive. Uh, but uh, you actually weren't hostile to the uh, federal government at all. Like there was that one skirmish that took place where, they, where, where the feds got their asses kicked. But, did I say asses? I'm sorry. <laughs> not on the Milk River. Huh? The Milk River. Yeah. yeah, it was just a skirmish. It wasn't that big a deal. And it was mostly the feds' fault, the federal government's fault, um, from what I understand. So the Blackfeet got their own reservation, uh, but if you look at all the other reservations on the, in the state, the Salish and Kootenai, they put them together on the Flathead Reservation. And if you know anything about the Salish and Kootenai, they don't really like each other a whole lot. Of course not. <laughs> they put the Grovan and the Aani together, the, the white clay people, the uh, Grovan, the Grovan and the Assiniboine, I'm sorry, uh, together. And they speak different languages. They don't speak the same language. One's a Suian language, Nakoda, and then the other is an Algonquian language. And here are these two tribes that they put on the same reservation, and they can't even talk to each other. And they've been enemies forever. As a matter of fact, I had a friend uh, up, up there. It wasn't wasn't your dad. He would talk when he talked about the Grovan. He would go like this. He would say Grovan because at one point they. There were envoys that came from the Nakota tribe, and they slit their throats and threw them in the river. So that's, what, that's how he would refer to the Grovans, these people, the throat slitters. Or the big belly. Okay, the Blackfeet referred to the Grovan <laughs> as, as Atsana. That's, that's your word for the Grovan, the Grovan tribe. Atsana, yeah. Atsana means fish gun eaters which is not a complimentary term, as you can imagine. Okay, so the different tribes have different horrible names for each other. But they put two tribes, uh, warring tribes, on the same reservation. What did they think was going to happen? They were hoping you'd kill each other off. They would kill each other off. That's what they were hoping for. Blackfeet got their own reservation. The Crow got their own reservation. The Cheyenne got their own reservation. But if you look at Fort Peck, Fort Peck is like four different tribes of Sioux. And, and two of them don't like each, don't like the other two. Okay, so they're putting these warring tribes on the same reservation, hoping that they would eliminate each other. And that's why they did it. Chippewa Cree, uh, of course, were later on, after all the, all the fighting, uh, they didn't establish that reservation until 1970. Okay, so different, different they speak different languages, two, two completely different languages. One's Algonquian, and the other is Suian. Uh, Algonquian language, the Blackfeet language is an, Algon is an Algonquian language. Okay. Um, Pima is, is Pueblo and it's, 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 it's got it, it's their own language, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. It's not anywhere close to Athabascan. Athabascan, almost everybody in Alaska speaks Athabascan. There's a group in Canada that speak Athabascan. There's a group in, Ca in California that speak Athabascan, and then there's the Apache and the Diné that speak Athabascan. Yes. Um, this summer we had the, um, the group from Canada, the Diné. Oh, really? Yeah, we had like 30, 30 of them come down. Well, we had to put them up in the dorm. And you know, I, I don't really understand that because that good, but um, one of my co-workers, he went over there and he, he was telling our other co-worker, you know, we only have this many blankets and, you know, only for the people who really need them and everything. And, and so they were sitting there and then the head guy went up to him and started speaking their Diné Athabascan. Okay. You know, but, and, it was really similar, but they, but it wasn't the same. But they were able to understand each other. Different dialects. Yeah. Of the same language. Yeah. Okay. And then um, he said that they really smoke a lot too, a lot of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Canadians. Yeah. Okay. But um, I decided to remember that. <laughs> That's funny. 
when I was in Vancouver at my conference, I, I don't know if I told you about the conference, uh, it was an international conference of teaching psychology. I told them that I was from the Navajo Reservation. They said, uh, and I taught at Diné College. And they said, oh, Diné, we know that because there's, they have a tribe that's called the Diné up in, up in Canada. Uh, of course, since they have a tribe in Canada, they knew all about you guys. Well, that's what they said. Not you guys, but you guys. <laughs> that's what they said anyway. But the reality is, it ain't the same tribe, my goodness. They're completely different. It's like calling the Apache the same as, as, the, as the Diné. Okay. All right. Okay. So it has to do with languages. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, different customs. Uh, and if we we uh, look at the how important customs are, of course, yesterday the eclipse. Uh, everybody else in the world was outside looking at the eclipse, and of course, not here. That wasn't happening here because you have a different different customs dealing with the the eclipse, right? If you watch television before the eclipse occurred, they had a, a commercial, an advertisement that talked about filming a wedding during the eclipse, people having a wedding during the eclipse. Of course, that's never going to happen on this reservation. It's never going to happen with these people, with this half million Diné, because they have, they're, there are different customs. There are different ways of looking at them. I'm sure the Blackfeet didn't. Well, you could hardly see it up north anyway. Yeah, oh, their custom is almost the same. So here, but okay. um, with them, they shoot, the man shoots an arrow in the sky, I shoot a gun in the sky. Okay. And then the woman has to stay in a dark place until it's in the So the men are outside? Yeah. Trying to recover the sun, okay. But the women have to stay inside. Interesting. Okay. I don't know. I, we didn't have an eclipse while I was up on on Fort Belknap, so I'm not exactly sure what they do, or if they did anything. Um, people eat different foods. If you live near the ocean, of course, you can eat seafood. I can't eat seafood because I have a condition called gout, and gout won't allow you to eat fish or any seafood at all. Uh, but a lot of people eat fish. Uh, where I come from, we eat a lot of pork because we grow pork, so we eat a lot of pork chops and whatnot. Uh, lots of vegetables from the garden, but our vegetables are different than yours. Uh, you guys live in a, in a high desert or in the desert, so your food is different from the food that we eat. So what, what happened when uh, Western man came, came into the Americas and they forced you guys onto reservations? They tried to feed you when you went out to Rio uh, uh, Ranch, Redondo, uh, Rio Redondo? Is that long walk? It was a long walk. Bosque Redondo, sorry. Bosque Redondo. They tried to feed you their food. And of course it made a lot of people sick. We are the food that we eat and we are used to the food that we eat. During uh, World War II, uh, the English uh, made allies of some of the uh, tribes living in uh, the Burma area. Uh, of course they eat, you know, they had their own food. Uh, if they got wounded and they were sent to an English hospital, they would feed them English food. And these people were dying in, en masse. They couldn't handle the food because the food was so much different from their own food. So we all have our customs as to what food we, are, we eat. When I was stationed down in Lubbock, Texas, I played on a Mexican softball team. I was the only gringo on the, on the team. And... Uh, and oddly, I'm not a very large person, but I was the biggest guy on the team. <laughs> not that that's important. Yeah, these are really, really sweet people. They would, they would uh, feed me before the game or, or after the game. Well, they tried to feed me after the game. But uh, the reality was I couldn't eat their food. One time they, uh, they had just, somebody had just visited Mexico, and they'd come back with a whole gallon jar of uh, peppers. And, of course, these guys were just eating them. You know, they were just eating these things right out of there. And, uh, and so one of them offered me a pepper, and I put it in my mouth. And, of course, it blistered my lips. It blistered my tongue. You know, here these guys are just eating these things like crazy. And I put one in my mouth, and I just about killed myself with that, uh, with that pepper. Why could they eat it and I couldn't? Well, I wasn't used to that type of food. I mean, it really messed me up. 
It not only messed up my mouth, but what I swallowed went through my digestive system, and I had Montezuma's revenge for about <laughs> for about two days. <laughs> And it was interesting because the guy that fed it to me thought it was the funniest thing in the world. His wife just about knocked the crap out of him because he had given me something that he knew might hurt me. And she was very angry that, uh, that he would, would damage somebody that was his friend. But he, I, of course, he thought it was a, a joke. It was a joke as far as he was. <clears throat> I couldn't handle that food because it was different food. As confusing as that is. Uh, they have different religious beliefs. Really? I thought all religions were the same. Aren't they? Aren't Muslims the same as Christians? Aren't Jewish people the same as Hindus? Aren't your traditions very, very similar to the Christian religion? The answer is no. Everybody has different religions, and everybody has a different way of seeing things. So this, we, we construct our lives with our customs, and we construct our lives around our religion. Of course you do. I, what was happening yesterday, uh, if you're from uh, the Blackfeet Reservation, the women have to stay inside. Here, everybody stays inside. Uh, but of course, Christianity doesn't say anything about eclipses. Uh, the Muslim religion doesn't say anything about eclipses. Uh, the Hindu religion doesn't say anything about eclipses, nor does the Buddhist religion. So here we have conflicting ideas to the extent that they made a commercial about having your wedding on, uh, when, during the eclipse, during a total eclipse as confusing as all that may be. Religion has caused a lot of problems in the world. Because if you adhere to a religion, there's one way to believe, and that's your way, right? Isn't that the way it works? Protestants don't like Catholics. Nobody likes Jewish people for some ungodly reason that nobody understands. Well, I, you do understand it, but nobody talks about it. What's wrong with Jewish people? Why, why, do, why, have people, why did Hitler try to murder all the Jewish people? What's wrong with him? He wasn't the first one trying to kill off all the Jews. Because they, um, they murdered Jesus. Did they? I thought the Romans murdered Jesus. Well, they were the ones that said to do it. They were the ones that persecuted him. So They're the ones that didn't accept him as Christ. Yeah. But the uh, Romans are the one that, ones that did it. So shouldn't we blame the, the Romans? They're the ones that actually did the killing. But they didn't want to. They were the hierarchy of the Jews and the Romans. They were the higher power. and so They were they in charge. Did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is an interesting topic because this was a, a huge argument of, uh, when, they, when Christianity became very, very powerful. They weren't exactly because it became powerful in Rome. So, so that, that group of individuals, they didn't want to blame themselves for killing Jesus. But in the Bible it says that, um, well it doesn't say in the Bible, but it says somewhere that um, because the Jews persecuted Jesus that from then to the last days of earth, they're always going to have a hard time for what they did from their But that's ancestors. not in the Bible. It, it's somewhere. I don't know where it's at. I thought that was the only religious book of the Christians. I don't know. <laughs> you trying to argue with me. <laughs> Isn't this confusing? Or is it confusing? It is confusing. We've been arguing, we've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah, this is odd. If the Romans are the ones that actually executed the guy, shouldn't they be persecuted or prosecuted or or people hate them because they killed Jesus? They actually killed Jesus. It wasn't the Jewish people that killed Jesus. They didn't have any, well they did have something to do with it because they didn't accept him as the Messiah. But neither did the Romans, I mean obviously. Otherwise they wouldn't they wouldn't have executed him. This is really kind of interesting. But it fit in with the politics if they persecuted the Jewish people and left the, the Romans alone. 
that fit, and, and of course, where is the, the, the pontiff, where is the, where is the rock that they built the church on? In Rome, of course. Okay. Does that exonerate the Romans for executing the guy? Do we even talk about the centurion is the one that slid his, that cut him in his, his abdomen and killed him? I know. Religion is, is really a tough, tough, tough subject. Uh, a lot of times if you read the Bible, if you've read the whole thing, wow, there's a lot of stuff in there that we don't, that nobody even pays attention to. So you, you, you cherry pick the, the good parts and leave, forget about the bad parts. Isn't that the way it works? Or not? I don't know. You guys are probably all Christians. You're going to have me shot at sunrise or something. <laughs> uh, different child rearing practices. And I'm going to talk about some child rearing practices in a minute that will appall you. Uh, yeah, you try to take care of your babies, right? Is that what you do? Um, I'm, my family had a conflict this summer over over my grandson, five years old. We're trying to move him up to Iowa where it's a much better situation, my daughter had a better job, and the father of that child didn't want him to leave Florida, even though it was a bad, worse situation. So we fought all summer, we spent thousands of dollars trying to um, get Florida to, to allow this child of Florida to move from Florida to Iowa. And we were successful. It cost thousands of dollars on both sides. But we wanted, we wanted to make sure the child was taken care of in, in Iowa because it's a better place to raise children, according to all kinds of things. The educational system is better. And that happened over the summer. I mean, you wouldn't allow anybody to take your babies away from you, would you? Yeah. That's why I love my son in Montana. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good idea. That's interesting. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. I, I actually, actually, I haven't talked to your dad in a long time. I haven't talked to him since the last time I was up there. Uh, how's Joe? He's good. Okay. Is he still down here? Okay. <coughs> Joe's her brother, older brother. Yeah, he has like five kids now. With him being a role member up there, does he benefit from the project more than the other? Yeah, we get like these little capita. They had a, that big old Cobell settlement money mm -hmm. that we buy. I know the Navajo tribe bought it, but no, nobody got money. They didn't distribute any money down here. Yeah, so I don't know what happened with you guys. Of course, Cobell was black. Thank thank you. That's when I enrolled him. I'm like, okay, I'll enroll him. <laughs> Did you guys um, like, get a for cap from him? Huh? Did you get a for cap from him? Yeah. Really? We didn't get a for cap. We just got, like, if we had mineral rights, we got nothing. Well, your dad's got mineral rights. Yeah, he has. Um, from his and dad and his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that last time I was up there. Uh, okay, what are we talking about? What, what do we know? Okay, what do we know? Much about a person's lifestyle can be predicted just by knowing his or her culture. Right? So if you're native, that's one thing. But there's a lot of different subcultures in the United States. And, of course, we stereotype. And uh, stereotyping is wrong, but at the same time, it gives us information. So if you're native and you come from, from this culture, from a culture, from the Blackfeet culture, from the the Fort Belknap culture, from the Diné culture, from the Pima culture, we have select information. If I said to you, Hopi, uh, those of you who have ever come in contact with Hopi would have a certain idea about how they lived. They're if, very, very cultured. Their culture is, is very strong. Yeah. And they adhere to it very, very uh, uh, staunchly. Okay. If I said, uh, if I said Sue to you, Okay, that may not even communicate with some of you, well, with two of you, but with the other two, you've come in contact with Sue, so that would say something to you. You would assume something about their lifestyle and about their personality. I think the Sue um, gave, this is my opinion though, you guys probably don't agree, 
with me, but they don't my, know anything about the Sioux. Do my, you? My opinion is is that the Sioux gave us the Sundance, um, or they showed us the Sundance. Right. They showed us the POV way. They showed us the um, the ghost dance way and everything. There's, I think they set a lot of things for other tribes. Yeah. And right. a lot of tribes are a little threatened by are intimidated, but they're so aggressive they go for what. Like a standing rock would be a good situation. It's interesting that you would say that they're aggressive because that's what I noticed. That's about what them as well. someone told me when they were talking about standing rock at last semester that they didn't want their help with that whole standing rock thing. And I said, well, they're pretty much forward people. They're going to fight for what they believe in. Right. So they're kind of set the bar for that standing rock and you know how other tribes went after that and like they gathered out of how many tribes were there. Of course, most of the tribes in South Dakota and North Dakota are are Sioux, are, are one type of Sioux or another. Lakota, Dakota, or Nakota. Not very many. Nakota. Nakota is your tribe? The Cinnabon, yeah. Yeah, Cinnabon's a branch off of the Sioux. The yeah. language is kind of the same, but it's not exactly the same. The D Dakota were over in Minnesota, and they came and all the way down to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Those were D Dakota. And the ones in the middle were the Lakota, and that's Standing Rock, and Pine Ridge, and Rosebud. And it's going to be interesting to see the River. whole their ears go into effect, like how it was with Standing Rock, you know. And then now um, there's going to be like a controversy with um, Kenny and Shane too. Oh, okay. I guess we'll have to wait for that to happen moment. <laughs> Psychological processes are shaped by experience. So whatever you experience, and of course, if you've been up in Fort Belknap, or if you've been in the Blackfeet Reservation, on the Blackfeet Reservation, your experiences are totally different from uh, people that uh, have only lived here, have only lived on the uh, uh, in, with the Navajo Nation. I guess it's Navajo Nation, or did they change it to Diné? Did they change it to Diné? No. They haven't changed it yet? Okay, interesting. Uh, to what extent should ways of thinking look similar around the world because people share a universal brain? Uh, so if um, uh, you're, you're courting somebody in Germany, does it look the same as if you're courting somebody in New York City or Chicago or, or Dallas or Phoenix or Chinle? Because we all have the same brain, do we do do we do things exactly the same? It doesn't look exactly the same. The results the same, marriage or whatever, or offspring. To what extent should people around the world uh, look different because they have divergent experiences? So should we look different? And does this make us look different? Here's a here's a great dane and a pony with the, that look the same. Different species, of course. Of course, they they look the same, but they are completely different. Uh, so, somebody in China, somebody in Mongolia, uh, somebody in Japan. Um, we're going to be talking about the Japanese. Is anybody into J-pop or K-pop? Japanese uh, music or Korean music? I have students down at the dorms that are. They're K-pop and J-pop. Yeah. yeah. Anime and manga. Yeah. You're uh, smiling like it's funny. It's, 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 it's my uh, my roommate who just my well my ex roommate just like barely got into that J K pop. So K pop. Yeah. Sometimes like when we're at home, like uh, sort of like having playing in the background. But interesting. Fascinating, isn't it? I mean, the beats are not the beats is actually not bad. It's just like the, the language that is interesting. Well, you don't understand Korean. Uh, the way it's 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 the way it's been spoken at the one uh, the way it's been spoken, but then again, when it's been sang. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, is it like techno or something? No, it's it honestly sounds like it could sound like a Justin Bieber song. Like, it, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> normal. What we consider this. But then when you find out what they're saying, you go, really? <laughs> <laughs> You're singing about that? That's a little odd. Oh, well, here's Sai. I've got Sai up here. Okay. 
Uh, culture uh, is any kind of information that is acquired from other members of one species through social learning that is capable of affecting an individual's behavior, any kind of idea that you have. Um, the most popular song that's ever been on YouTube. I looked at it last night. I played it last night. I'm one of the guys that's played it. Anyway, I played it last night. Two billion, almost three billion hits. I know. Yeah, it's huge. Gangnam style. Oh. Yeah, Gangnam style, sure. Where he does the, the horse thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Really strange video with, well, anyway. Really strange, well, let's, we ought to play it. I wonder if I can get the internet here. Have you seen that commercial with that monkey? Like, it's puppy monkey baby. That is I, they've gross. taken that off. No, they put it back on. Oh, it's back on now? They took it off for a while because it was so controversial. Yeah. Puppy monkey baby. Have you guys seen that? It's Mountain Dew. One of yeah. the yeah. One of the Mountain Dew. It's this um, puppy that looks like a monkey. That's a baby. So this Part is a uh, this is a commercial. Yeah. For Mountain Dew. For Kickstarter Mountain Dew. I think Kickstarter Mountain Dew. It's really weird. It was a um, last year's Super Bowl commercial. Puppy Monkey Baby. Yeah. And they just had this song playing in the commercial? Oh, this, this commercial. Oh, but Gangnam Star! Hey. Gangnam Star! So this is the video we're talking about? <laughs>
we're not done yet. Anyway. Okay. There's a couple jokes in there that only Koreans understand. You don't want to see the next one. That next one's weird. Okay. That only Koreans understand. Um, the uh, people that he was dancing with, the one guy in the, in the elevator, and the guy that was dressed in yellow, they're, they're both famous people in Korea. Now Sai, of course, is very famous as well, which is kind of interesting. What else? Uh, when was the last time you saw a video with a man sitting on the toilet? I think this is the only one. <laughs> I know. So are we offended because of the toilet thing? The Koreans thought it was a hoot. Are you okay with it? You get to watch a man sitting on the toilet? A little bizarre. Okay. The rest of it was not that odd. Okay. Maybe it was odd. Maybe it was really odd. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this is uh, very Korean. Uh, has anybody ever been to Korea besides me? Am I the only one? Okay. Yeah, this is very Korean. Um, and strangely enough, it's been po it's popular all over the world. As odd as that may seem, it's very popular. Well, obviously, it's got almost three billion hits, uh, more than any other video that's ever been made. Uh, so ideas are different, uh, the kinds of beliefs that, pe that people have. Uh, yesterday was a good example. Um, I was uh, downstairs. Uh, of course, I'm not Diné, so, you know, the whole eclipse thing. So what should I have done? You know, that, and nobody had an answer for me. Um, my my uh, Western colleague uh, stayed home all day yesterday. I had class in the morning until 10 o'clock, and then I... Uh, I only had three students out of 10, uh, or 20, I'm sorry, out of 20, three out of 20, so that's not too, too bad or too good, actually. But uh, uh, my colleague stayed home all day because she was afraid she would offend somebody here. Uh, I, there was, I had a Diné colleague that actually tried to hold class during the eclipse, and of course she didn't have any students, so it was kind of interesting. So people have different ideas, different beliefs, how much, how strongly do you adhere to, to, to the tradition, I guess, is, is the question. Uh, people assume because I'm Western that I'm Christian, but I'm not. I know, that's very confusing. So I, I, thought, I thought all Americans were Protestants, no, or Catholics, no, or Mormon or something. I don't know, no, okay. Uh, but here, I, I don't have any religion at all. Uh, technology. Um, uh, what type of technology you use, or whether you use technology at all. The Amish, for example, a good example of a group of individuals that don't use technology at all. However, they can ride in cars, and you will see them riding around uh, in Amish country. I don't think there are any Amish around here, I don't think. But uh, in Iowa, we have Amish. As a matter of fact, um, uh, we have apple trees and we're going to uh, harvest the apples and make cider out of whatever we don't eat. Uh, and uh, uh, my wife uses an Amish press. Uh, there's an Amish family that presses apples for cider. And so that's, that's in Iowa. I grew up in an area that uh, just uh, east of us was a whole Amish community. Um, up in Montana, of course, the Huterites are up there. Totally different culture. They, they can use technology, but they don't use as much as everybody else does. They're starting to get naughty. Cause, um, you keep saying that. I, <laughs> I see them in a casino. Uh -huh. Do you guys know what Amish people are? These are Huterites. Huterites, yeah. They were like in a casino and then... Um, this Indian days, from the Indian days, they were making fried bread. They were making well, they fried steal, they, they were like selling it like crazy too. They steal June berries, we know that. Yeah, 
They were picking our sawdust berries yeah. and selling them by the quarters. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, they come go onto the reservation and steal all your berries. No, that's very... Yeah, they, they'll do that. They're kind of interesting because, well, according to their religion, they can do anything they want, even steal stuff. Well, obviously, but they can steal stuff. Mm -hmm. According to their religion, sure. Of course. As confusing as all that is. <clears throat> Let's not talk about the, the uterines. Uh, their religion says that they are here and everybody else is here. So sure, <laughs> thievery is not something, you know, that's these people telling them what they can so do. So that's why they act the way they act? Yeah. Isn't that the, the reason that, that uh, Christianity has acted the way that they've acted with throughout the world? Every place they've gone, they've acted like they were better than everybody else? The English, the French, the Spanish, right? Isn't that the way it has been? Right? When Americans go someplace else, when we went into Vietnam, when we went into Iraq, Afghanistan, did we understand what was going to, that the Sunni and the Shia were going to try to kill each other after we, we took the government away? No, we didn't know. We didn't know because we were Christian. We don't understand these things. We did the same thing with the Japanese during World War II. If you look at all the early battles during World War II in the Pacific with the Japanese, we captured hardly anybody. For one thing, they would kill us if they captured us. So we returned in kind. We killed them. The question is, who was the one killing prisoners to begin with? Was it us or was it them? We say it's us or them, of course, and they say it's us. But, but if you look at all the early battles, we never captured any Japanese. We couldn't get any intelligence from anybody. Why? Because they would either they would commit suicide or we would kill them. We were taking no prisoners and they were taking no prisoners. Uh, habits, of course, are another thing, and, and then any, any kind of practice that, that is done. And that, uh, that, it, uh, create, that is your culture. And we've got Sai again. Uh, were you offended by, was he objectifying women in that uh, video? Do you think he was objectifying women? Making them into sex objects? Yeah. Yeah, but... Not like we would do it in the United States. <laughs> different culture, different way. I mean, all the women had lots of clothes on, if you notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think there's worse videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course there are worse videos. Uh, but this is fairly risque as far as the Koreans are concerned. My wife was stationed over there, um, and she would have to go to the bars uh, to check out uh, whether they were... In the, okay, they're, they're, so they're selling alcohol. Right? Uh, but what they would do, if you didn't drink all your drink, they would take it and pour it back into the bottle. That's, they're not supposed to do that, but of course that's one of the things they had to inspect. The other thing they had to inspect uh, were the ladies that were uh, prostitutes. Uh, they had to make sure that they didn't have any diseases. Uh, so they would, she would have to go to the bars. She didn't do this all by herself. Every once in a while, every, once every two months, she was the officer of the day, so she would have to go and inspect all the bars in the area to make sure that they uh, they were adhering to all the hygiene uh, laws that the United States has. Uh, really kind of interesting though, she saw all these strippers at the uh, at the uh, uh, at the bars. Uh, they uh, would wear uh, tights underneath their bikini bathing suits. So they always had clothes on. It's kind of like this. I mean, this is not revealing at all. We didn't certainly didn't see any cleavage. Uh, but it's just the way that they, it's the, the Korean um, uh, culture is completely different than, than we have in the United States. They don't want to take their clothes off, but they do take their clothes off, but they have clothes underneath their clothes so that when they take their whatever they take off, they have something else on because that's part of their culture. And if you notice, there was certainly nowhere close to anything, no nudity in, in the, in the uh, in the video, which is really kind of fascinating. If you look at all of Sai's videos, and I've seen two or three of them, um, it's, it's all that way. He, you know, there's no nudity, no cleavage, no anything. But of course, if you look at an, an American video, there's 
lots of skin. Lots wrecking of wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, wrecking ball where the lady's completely naked. I, I read something this this uh, summer. They uh, she was saying that she will be remembered as the naked lady on the wrecking ball. That's what uh, Miley Cyrus said. Yeah, the wrecking ball. That's, that's interesting. We certainly found tattoos that we didn't know existed. So that was interesting about wrecking ball, I guess. <laughs> Uh, culture can be used in a global context. Western culture refers to people clustered from the northern area of Europe. And of course, uh, when we're talking about the United States, we're primarily talking about the Western culture. Is there any other culture in the United States other than the Western culture? Well, of course there are. There, there are native cultures. There are immigrant cultures. Um, but of course, the assumption is that people will assimilate to the Western culture. So, the, you, so individuals have to assimilate to the Western culture. That is the assumption. Or is it? How about um, Haiti? I, I have a student who's from Haiti, and I thought that they had their own language, but they don't. Well, they speak. They speak French. We, we, that, that's weird. Is it? Yeah. It's you know, the French own that island. And then they, they uh, rebelled against the French, and they were able to, to kick the French off the island. And that's why they speak French. The other half of the island speaks Spanish. But yeah, it's the Dominican Republic, as confusing as that is. Yeah, but that's Western culture as well. What they speak is a Creole. It's, a, it's a almost French, but it's similar to, to French Canadian. It's not quite right. <laughs> Uh, the Koreans, my, uh, when my wife was the, uh, stationed in Korea, they called uh, the Koreans, the Koreans speak English to some extent, uh, but it's not, it's not quite right. It doesn't quite fit. You know, all the words don't quite go together quite, quite well, very well at all. Uh, United Kingdom, of course, is part of the Western culture. This is the United Kingdom. Scotland, England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. This is Ireland here of course, and that is not part of the United Kingdom, but they are part of the Western culture. The Netherlands are part of the Western culture as well. Dutch are kind of interesting people. Um, <clears throat> any place that they've, they have controlled, uh, they, they, are, they tend to be very, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, something not, not, not unkind. Um, uh, they're very strict. Can I say that? Okay. The Dutch. Um, they will, uh, they control, they're very uh, controlling, controlling people, excuse me. France, of course, the French. Uh, Canada was French before it was English. Uh, the Haitians, of course, are another uh, French group in the United States, I mean in the Western culture. Uh, Germans, Germany. The interesting thing, why, why did I pick these pictures? Uh, I honeymooned in Paris, okay, <laughs> and that's Creve Coeur, and of course that's the Eiffel Tower. So my, my, my current wife and I honeymooned in, in uh, and we lived in Germany, we were stationed in Germany, and that's Luschwanstein, that's the uh, castle that uh, Disney's castle was, was uh, modeled from Luschwanstein in Bavaria, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, countries with a strong English heritage, of course. Uh, the United States has a strong English heritage. Australia and Canada have strong English heritages. Uh, they were part of the Commonwealth. I think they still are part of the Commonwealth, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, Australia and Canada. Uh, so it, we, it's really kind of interesting if you're dealing with uh, the Canadians or you're dealing with the Australians. And of course, I was just at that conference in Vancouver. Um, they're very English. They're a lot more English than we are. Uh, of course, they, they, they adhere to things that are English. Uh, they, they use the English as a, as a symbol, uh, as, as somebody that they should look up to. And in the United States, we don't do that. We don't care about the Queen, for example. But of course, you'd never insult the Queen in Canada. You'd never insult the Queen in Australia. In the United States, we don't care, right? You know, we care about the Queen of England. Or that, she's what, 80 what years old? She's the oldest. I think the one she dies that um, whoever takes her spot, they're going to take all the money. 
and then get rid of that and they're going to print the money of the new person would it be um, her son or her grandson yeah whoever I don't know do I care I kind of do I don't care what do I care Jewish culture, subcultures in the United States, and uh, one of the subcultures is the Jewish culture. We do have a strong Jewish culture in the United States. The reality is there are more Jewish people in the United States than there are in Israel. 32% of the Jewish people in the world live in Israel. 36% of the Jewish people in the world live in the United States. So we actually have more Jewish people in the United States than we do, than there are Jewish people in Israel. Are they a, uh, a power in the United States? And the answer is, oh yeah, sure they are. Of course they are. There are a lot of, they have a lot of power in the United States, a lot of economic power, a lot of influence uh, in the government, uh, the Jewish subculture. Uh, the urban culture. Uh, is anybody from Phoenix? Has anybody ever been to Phoenix, lived in Phoenix? Uh, 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 Browning. You've lived in Phoenix? Mesa. Mesa? Okay, well. That whole area is. He's got the casino down there. He's got the casino, but he's lived up here most of the time. Uh, no, 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 I actually started preschool, graduated college, or did, graduated high school and did college up So I've only lived here about like, six years. So are you okay with this culture? Uh, I was a culture shock at first. Okay. So you, did you consider yourself a city boy? Uh, so I'm told, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you? Well, the question is, do you consider yourself a city person? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. I have relatives from Chicago. I'm from Indiana. And, you know, I lived on a farm. Grew up on a farm. They're from Chicago, and they can't imagine living any place except Chicago. They have. Some of them have. But I have a niece that has never been out of Chicago. She's traveled out of Chicago, but she considers herself a Chicagoan, whatever the hell that is. She lives on the 42nd floor of a, of a high-rise in Chicago. She owns the apartment. I don't know. She is, she's a very urban person. These people can barely drive because in Chicago you don't have to drive. Like, of course, where, you're, where you lived, it's, it's very spread out. Phoenix is a very spread out area. I call it Phoenix because even though it's Mesa, Chandler, and... Would it be considered like a, say if you were to go to a, like a different city, yeah. you would kind of like map out the transit stations and like how they're scheduled in the work? Sure. Sure. And you would consider this, okay, this looks like hell to me, right? I've never, I, I don't like this. I don't like people that close, that close to me. No offense to people, I guess, but I don't want I don't want to be crowded in a subway. The only city I've ever been in that I could tolerate was Paris. Of course, I was on my honeymoon, so I wasn't thinking of all the people around me. I was thinking of my wife, who was right beside me. Uh, gay and lesbian culture in the in the United States. Uh, gay and lesbian culture has expanded. It's not just the gay and lesbian culture anymore. It's the LGBTQ. 2S culture. Once upon a time it was just gays and lesbians, that was a culture unto themselves. But the reality is now they have embraced transgender people, they've embraced uh, bisexual people, they've embraced uh, people that, that refer to themselves as queer. And I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I understand two spirits, but I'm not exactly sure what queer means. But I'll figure that. I'll figure it out. I'm old. I'm, I'm set in my ways, I'm 67 years old, but I will figure this out and understand it eventually. Anyway, this is a subculture in the United States, and a very a relatively powerful one. Uh, during the last election, of course, um, uh, Donald Trump uh, had a rainbow flag and it said, uh, uh, gays and lesbians uh, for Donald Trump. I know. I don't know where he got it. Yeah, eh, it's a famous picture on the internet. And here he... Um that transgender and the army and military? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Well, it is. Uh, high, uh, people that are rich, people that are wealthy. And if you've ever been around these people, they're different. They ain't the same as the rest of us. I'm from a, I grew up on a farm. I'm middle class. I hope. 
I'm middle class. Anyway, my, uh, this is one of the conflicts between my daughter and uh, her significant other, not significant, he's never been significant, he just impregnated her. Uh, he comes from a wealthy family, he comes from a, a place where you can't get into unless they tell them to let you in the gate. It's kind of like a military base, a military compound. This is the way wealthy people live, and their houses are really big. They don't want you stealing their, their stuff. I almost said shit, but I didn't. <laughs> so they lock themselves away in these places. And the, these people are different. And these are the people that are in charge of the United States, especially right now. Look at all the billionaires we have in the administration. Lots of billionaires. These people, what do they know about people that live in, in, uh, in apartments or people that live in uh, trailers? What do they know about these people? Nothing. They live behind a gate. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a subculture in the United States. Vegetarian culture, the vegans, these crazy people that won't eat meat. And don't get into a con an argument with them because uh, anyway, they're a lot of fun. Vegetarians. The millennial culture. You guys are all millennials. I'm not. I'm a baby boomer. I'm old. I accept that. It hurts my feelings sometimes. But is that Britney Spears? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I notice, I uh, recognize Will Smith and Toy Story. But okay. Britney Spears with a snake. The Harvard culture. Really? They have their own culture. It's one college. They have their own culture. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's not like an Ivy League culture. It's just like strictly Harvard. No, it's strictly Harvard. Uh, Yale culture is completely different. Uh, University of Pennsylvania completely different. Cornell is completely different. Columbia is completely different. No, Harvard culture is something very, very specific. Very, very specific to Boston, and it's very, very specific to that uh, to that in institution. The Harvard culture. Very powerful in the United States. Most of our leaders come from Harvard and Yale, as confusing as that is. The Bushes both went to Yale. Uh, Kennedy went to Harvard. The Mac culture. Mac, you, how many people have an iPhone? Anybody have an iPhone? Sarah's got one. Oh, so it is. No, I don't either. I don't like those things. You got one? No, oh, no, no. It's an LG. It's an LG. Oh, okay. It's LG. I should, yeah. I showed Sarah, and she said, she said, well, that's not an iPhone. But I have, all my other computers are Macs. This is a Mac. Okay, anyway, okay, the Mac culture. Let me, let me finish this up. The Trekkie culture? Trekkies? People that, and there's a new Star Trek is coming to television. <gasps> How exciting. I know. I'm so excited. Okay, why don't we stop right here? We'll pick this up next time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 